The government's role in the economy goes beyond managing interest rates and the money supply. There is also what we call fiscal policy. <laughs> fiscal policy involves the economic decisions from the government made by people you elect, the president and the members of Congress. The decisions usually involve the setting of the budget, a very direct tool for determining the priorities for government purchases in our economy. The majority of government purchases in the U.S. economy come from the state and local level, a byproduct of our federalist system. State and local governments are typically in charge of providing the day-to-day -day services we use, while the federal government largely concerns itself with stabilizing the macro economy, providing financial assistance for national priorities, and protecting national interests, especially in the area of defense. Stabilizing the macro economy typically takes the form of transfer payments, payments the government makes to people and firms without any good or service provided in return. Think of, for example, SNAP, food stamp benefits, uh, unemployment insurance, and TANF, welfare. These are examples. The majority of transfer payments come from the federal level. Fiscal policy typically also includes items we call automatic stabilizers, which should stabilize the macroeconomy without input from our elected officials. For example, a progressive income tax system is an automatic stabilizer because the less money you earn, the lower your tax rate. If you lose your job through no fault of your own, you automatically qualify for unemployment insurance, which is another automatic stabilizer. Governments finance these and other activities by collecting revenues mostly in the form of taxes. The makeup of taxes that fund governments vary based on the type of government. For example, the federal government depends mostly on income and payroll taxes, while state and local governments typically depend upon property taxes for their revenues. Government decides its priorities for spending by creating a budget, which is basically an itemization, a list of what and how much will be spent over a span of time. Making that budget is a political process, which makes decisions often very inefficient and slow to respond to surprises. That political process can also lead to what is called discretionary spending in budgets. Discretionary indicates that it's spending at the discretion, the decision of lawmakers, beyond what was planned for in the budget. Spending on military activity, um, natural disasters, bailouts, pandemics, or even unforeseen tax cuts could all be considered discretionary spending. Some governments, including the U.S. federal government, can borrow to finance these expenditures. When the government spends or expends more money than they collect in revenue, that's called deficit spending. Deficit spending means the government has to issue bonds to borrow money for the current budget. On the other hand, if the government spends less than they collect in revenue, that difference would be called a surplus. Surpluses and deficits are examples of flow variables. We analyze them over a span of time and usually using time series charts. The sum of surpluses and deficits can give us a snapshot of a government's debt. Debt is considered a stock variable because it's analyzed in a moment of time. What the debt level is today reflects the accumulation of decisions to run surpluses and deficits over an entire history of existence. The fact that some governments ran deficits that created debt means that some governments have to spend part of their current budget to pay interest on their debt. Clearly, the opportunity cost of running deficits is whatever your government could have purchased with the money it's using now to pay interest on debt. More education could have been provided, more security, more of anything really. The other reason to watch our deficits is that debt as a proportion of GDP theoretically can't rise forever. While some economists have suggested governments like the US have a high ceiling for accumulating debt, the other nations that we have typically seen as their debt levels rise, interest costs rise. And as they run larger deficits and grow their debt as a proportion of their GDP, it becomes a problem for them in the longer run.